I'm Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist with University of Missouri Extension. I'm pleased to be presenting the fruit report. In this issue, we'll discuss the rotating cross-arm trellis, a new and innovative way to train blackberries. This report is a compilation of a research project recently completed at the University of Missouri Southwest Research Center in Mount Vernon. And anyone who would be interested in a full report on that project, which included the performance of seven thornless blackberry cultivars on the RCA trellis over a four-year period of time from 2016 to 2019, is encouraged to reach out to me. The rotating cross-arm trellis, or the RCA trellis, offers several advantages to blackberry producers. It leads to an easier and more efficient harvest. All of the fruit is concentrated on one side of the canopy, as we can see in this photo. It also leads to improved productivity and enhanced control of spotted wing drosophila and diseases. The fruit that is produced on the RCA trellis has less problems with sun scald. Uh, the fruit is produced in the shade of the canopy. And the system also allows for the potential for winter protection of the entire canopy. Disadvantages, it is an expensive system to install. It's a bit harder to learn how to train and prune blackberries on this system to more traditional trellis systems. And it is definitely a management intensive system. And there are a number of operations that must be done in a timely fashion to make most effective and efficient use of the RCA trellis. RCA trellis plantings are established typically on raised beds. These beds are frequently covered with landscape fabric and irrigation is provided by a single 18 millimeter drip line per row, generally with 18 inch spacing between built-in emitters in the drip line. The plants are spaced four to five feet apart in the row and the rows are 12 feet apart. This photo is an illustration of the RCA trellis planting at the Southwest Center. The uh, fr structure of the RCA trellis is cross-arm assemblies connected by high tensile steel wire. These cross-arm assemblies, as we can see in this photo, are typically spaced 15 to 30 feet apart down the row. The uh, longer arm of the trellis is the fruiting side of the trellis. And this longer arm is typically on the north or the east side of the row. And thus the fruit that is produced on the shoots, the laterals trained to the side of the trellis are produced in the shade of the trellis. And the trellis allows for the canopy to be raised and lowered during different times during the growing season. Taking a quick look at RCA trellis positions for the uh, uh, dormant season from late fall to early spring, the trellis is in the horizontal position as we can see in the row on the left in the upper picture. The uh, trellis is in the upright or fruiting position from May through November. The lower picture shows the uh, uh, canopy of a blackberry planting on the RCA trellis during the flowering period. And again, the uh, system works to, con to uh, concentrate berry production on one side of the trellis by leaving the trellis in this horizontal position through flowering. The flower cluster positions are then fixed in, in an upright position. And then when the trellis is raised, all of the fruit then is produced on one side of the trellis, again, typically in the shade of the trellis. Let's take a look at a video. Uh, this video was shot at Eckerd Farm in Belleville, Illinois. Eckerd Farm has been a leader in uh, using the RCA trellis in the Midwest, and they are actually using a variation on the RCA trellis design. First thing we want to do is we want to take the blank trellis wall and lay it down. And it's a lot better to do this with a crew of people because if you only have one or two, you get too much tension on it. It kind of needs to go in a wave as you rotate it down. So they'll kind of spread themselves out as you go down the, the field and roll it over. So it goes relatively quickly if you have enough people to do it. If you got one or two guys, it's a real bear with, with the system that we have. I know I've seen like the RCA system, it's much easier to, it kind of just like goes over like a deck of cards being uh, rolled over. That's not the case with our system here. Um, so again, we got to rotate that over center so those blooms come back up uh, on this side and then we bring it back and all that fruit's hanging down so it's easy to harvest. 
The other thing I would say about doing a double wall system like this is it allows us to lay two rows towards each other when we're going into bloom. And that leaves wide open aisles like this to do spraying with. So we don't have to come back in here and stand it up to run a sprayer through to put on a fungicide spray in the springtime. So that, that being said, it is challenging because, you know, this is in the bloom position. And we get into May when these things are blooming, we have to be training this primocane. And we have to train it on the wire on the opposite side. So that's tough to do. A lot of times what the guys will do is they'll raise these up a little bit to do their work in here and then lay them back down the same day so that they can work on the inside of it, not through the canopy of the plant. Now let's take a quick look at the RCA trellis management through the season. The upper picture shows a planting with row covers recently removed. The row covers are taken off of the planting in March. The row covers are maintained in the planting through the flowering period to protect the canopy or the uh, blossoms in the canopy from the potential of frost damage. The lower picture shows flowering in April to early May. The trellis is raised to the fruiting position in May. And this picture on the left shows the blossoms and the uh, position of the flowering clusters. Again, they are all initially oriented in an upright position when the trellis is horizontal to the ground. And then when it's raised, the flowers are then um, the, the flower position is set and the flowers are then concentrated on one side of the trellis. The training of primocanes begins in April and continues through June and primocanes are typically trained two times per week. And again, we can see in this lower picture primocanes being trained horizontally along the training wire. Fruit harvest commences in June through August depending upon the blackberry cultivar. The upper picture again shows the uh, developing fruit in this case, the cultivar is triple crown concentrated on the shady side of the trellis. The lower picture shows pickers at work. Uh, pickers typically favor the RCA trellis because the majority of the crop is produced on one side of the trellis in a zone that is easy to harvest and pickers are generally picking in the shade of the trellis. Following harvest, the uh, spent floor canes are removed here we can see in this photo the pile of floricanes after they've been cut off of the, uh, the uh, plants. The remaining growth on the trellis are the uh, primocanes and the laterals that have grown off of the primocanes that were previously trained in a horizontal position. The laterals are then flipped over and trained on the fruiting side of the trellis as soon as the uh, spent floricanes have been removed. In this picture, we can see the horizontal uh, horizontally trained primocanes and then the laterals growing from those primocanes that are now trained on the fruiting side of the trellis. This picture was taken in August. As growth uh, slows and ceases in the fall, the uh, uh, laterals are trimmed. The laterals are spaced about four to six inches apart and the goal is to fill the entire fruiting arm with lateral growth as we can see in these two pictures. The picture on the left before pruning, the picture on the right following pruning. And then the trellis is lowered into the winter position in late November to early December after the plants are dormant. And finally, the, uh, the uh, trellis, uh, the plants on the trellis are covered with row covers as we can see here in uh, th this uh, slide, uh, typically in December and then the row covers are weighed down with sandbags. And the uh, row covers are heavyweight row covers. These are 1.75 ounces per square yard row covers that are placed over the uh, trellis. And the bottom line is this system offers growers the opportunity to first of all, improve the efficiency of management and harvest. It also allows growers to protect the crop by protecting the plants during the dormant season and also protecting the blossoms from frost damage during flowering. Turning our attention to the October to November calendar of activities and fruit plantings, uh, the season is definitely winding down at this point. There may still be some late apples to be harvested, but most fruit harvest is complete at this point and attention is turning towards uh, preparing plantings for the winter by winterizing irrigation systems. It's also a great time to be cleaning up orchards and uh, uh, 
uh, giving them a, a final mowing. In the case of tree fruit orchards, uh, monitor the orchards for vole activity. And in the case of berry plantings, uh, strawberry plantings in particular, uh, keep an eye on the weather. If the weather turns cold, uh, after we've had several killing frosts, then it may be time to place row covers. But typically row covers are not placed until late November or early December. Feel free to consult the uh, University of Missouri Extension Field Specialist in Horticulture that is assigned to your county. Locate your county on this map and then locate the uh, a particular specialist that's assigned to that county. If your farm is in a county that does not have an assigned specialist, reach out to the specialist that is located closest to you. And I'm sure they'll be happy to help. <laughs> 